He's on a pig farm eating pig slop with the pigs. And one day he wakes up. How many of you know sometimes we have to we have to eat with the pigs before we wake up? How many of you understand this? Sometimes we gotta waller in the mud before we wake up. Sometimes we have to hit rock bottom before the lights come on. Well, the lights came on, and he woke up one day and he said, You know what? This is ridiculous. He said, I don't deserve my father to welcome me back into the house. I don't deserve to be a son. I forfeited that the day I walked out on him. But 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 being a servant in my father's house uh, is better than slopping these hogs. So I'm going to go back home and I'm going to try to plead and beg with my father that he would at least let me work on the farm. I mean, if he'll let me do the most menial task, it'll be better than the life I've got right now. And he starts back home. What he doesn't know is that the father has been waiting for him to come back home. I've got one daughter, and I can remember the first time she ever, she learned to drive in Palm Beach County. I, that is ridiculous right there. That's of the devil. I this. And, uh, but I remember the first time she ever took the car, went out on her own with her driver's license. And I'm telling you, I walked the floor, I prayed, I mean, I was more spiritual that night than I had been many nights. And I, I roamed from window to window. I didn't watch much TV. I just watched windows. You know, and I go, oh, I think she's coming. I think she's coming. No, that's a guy who's got one light burning out on his truck. That's not her. And I just, I, I was waiting for her to come home. I wanted her home. I wanted her safe. Are, are you listening to me? I mean, no, it's a heart of the dead. It's a heart. Some of you, you know, the kids leave for the weekend. You change the door locks. I mean, that's you know, <laughs> This guy didn't do that. No, 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 no. This guy. Before Motel 6 ever had the thing, we'll leave the light on for you. This guy did. Every night he's out there going, where's my boy? Where's my boy? I hope my boy comes home. I hope my boy comes home. He's praying for him. He's looking for him. He's watching for him. And one night here, he looks and there's a figure coming. And he looks, I'll tell you, as only a dad can do, he knew it was his son. He, I don't know if it was a, the size of his son or the gait of his son or the walk of his son or the sound of his footsteps, but he knew it was his boy. And the Bible said the father then did something that was just, I mean, in a Jewish society, almost totally undignified. He lifted up his robes like he had on skirts, and he didn't walk. He took off running in the direction of the boy, and when he got there, he scooped him up in his arms, he hugged him, and he kissed him, and he said, and welcome home, son. Welcome home. Now let me tell you something. That boy did not expect to receive that kind of welcome. And can I just say that most of you in this room do not expect from God to receive that kind of welcome. Listen, folks, let's just be serious. We have done more to injure and wound the heart of God than all of the people in our life have ever done to injure and wound us. We've broken the laws. We, 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 we've said things and done things that have wounded and, 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 and hurt the heart of God. And yet He is like this Father. He comes running looking for us. I don't know about you, but the day I accepted Jesus Christ, it was as if my Father in Heaven was just waiting for the moment to scoop me up in His arms and say, Welcome home, son. I've been waiting for this for a long, long time. You see... God runs to us. He runs to us because He wants us to be healed. He wants us to receive forgiveness. And He knows that if we can receive forgiveness, then we can give forgiveness. Now, it sounds great. Doesn't it, doesn't it sound great? It's the formula. Here it is. A plus B equals C. I get forgiven by God, and then I can turn around and give forgiveness to everybody else. That sounds great, doesn't it? So simple, so easy. Wrong. Because here's the problem. We don't like forgiving people. Hello? We don't want to forgive people. We want to hang on to it. Come on, how many of you folks are married? Can I see your hands for your hands? How many of you have ever been in a fight? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the rest of you, to be honest. I had a guy one time, he told me, he said, uh, Pastor, you said I've been married to my wife for 20 years. We've never been in a fight. He said, excuse me, sir, I'm going to take about three steps back because when lightning comes, I think I just want a little bit of room between me. He said, no, 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 I'm serious, we've never fought. Sir, I said, sir, I'm not talking about like with baseball bats or sticks or knives. I, I'm just talking about you have a verbal disagreement. Oh, no, it's never happened. It's never happened. I said, seriously. He said, yes, seriously. He said, we've never had an argument. I said, so like you, uh, you got married and then you moved out? Was that how this works? I mean, you haven't lived with each other, right? I mean, you can't live under the same roof. You can't sit in the same car. You can't share a meal or share a bank account. Hello? And not have a fight or two. It's just, it's reality, isn't it? And what we do instead of forgiving is we...
hang on to grudges. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Listen, we could see in the in the forgiveness, unforgiveness realm this morning. Some of you, we would not have let you in the building because you have come armed for man. You've got a six shooter on your side, a shotgun strapped over your shoulder. You've got shotgun shells ringing your chest like an old West cowboy, and there's enough bullets around your waist to, to, to serve you and to go into battle. Because what happens is somebody says something to you, and it stings and it hurts, and you grab hold of that thing and you say, I'm going to put that right here. And at the appropriate moment, I'm going to bring that up. How many of you have ever done that? Come on now, folks. We reach back for ammunition and say, well, you remember two weeks ago you said this to me. You're just like your old ugly mother. You're just like your old ugly mother. Hello? We say that in the spirit of love, don't we? Because we want to heal these relationships. No! We want to hurt them worse than they're hurting us. Because here's what we believe in our wicked, sick kind of way. If I can hurt you before you hurt me or hurt you worse than you hurt me, then maybe you will stop hurting me. See, it's, it's, the, it's the principle that we live by. It's the code we live by. Instead of it working this way, God forgives me and I forgive you, it's more typically like this. God forgives me and I don't forgive you. Now, there's something very distorted and dangerous about that kind of living. And in your notes, number two, I want you to write this one down. And you better get this. This is true. It's simple. Here's the second truth. It's simple yet profound. The unforgiving, the unforgiving become the unforgiven. I said the unforgiving become the unforgiven. In other words, if I choose not to forgive, guess what? The Bible says I don't get forgiven. Now let's... Let's rewind all the way back to this first story of the king and the servant. And the servant receives forgiveness from the king. He skips out of the king's quarters. I mean, the, the king looks at the CPA and says, take a, a, a receipt, if you would, and write $100,000 on it. And then put a red line through it and then write paid in full and hand that to the servant. I mean, can you see him skipping out of there? Zippity doo da I got, I'm, all, I'm in the money. Well, I actually don't have any money, but I'm out of debt. I mean, he's happy as a lot. He, so he can't wait to get home and tell his wife, hey, listen, you were going to jail today, but you're not anymore. I mean, I, I, I got us off the hook. I mean, we were going to lose the kids, but we're not now. But he doesn't get three steps out the door. And a friend of his comes walking by. He recognizes, he said, hey, loser, get yourself over here. Now, you owe me $10. You borrowed $10 from me three weeks ago because you were having a Burger King fit and you never paid me back. And I want my $10 right now because I just got free and I want to go celebrate with my family. So give me my $10 now. The guy says, dude, I don't have my $10. I don't have any money. And he does exactly what this guy did. Falls on his face. Please forgive me. I'll pay you back. And he says, you're no way. You are a loser. You've always been a loser. And a policeman walks by and he says, take this guy away. I can prove he owes me $10. Lock him up. And they do. And you know the rest of the story. He, the king hears. You see, the truth is, we're greedy for mercy. But we just don't want to give any mercy to everyone else. You see, we don't want God to keep a real good record of what we've done to offend Him. Yet we are masters of the Dewey Decimal System when it comes to keeping up with the library of offenses that have been done against us. I want to tell you that God wants us to learn how to forgive. And this is not an isolated teaching. Look in your notes. Uh, none of these have an asterisk beside of them, by the way. Matthew 5, 7, we read it already. It says, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. That's the beatitude that we were focusing on today. Matthew 6, 14 to 15 says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others the sin, your Father will not forgive you. Mark 11, 25 says, But when you're praying, first forgive anyone that you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive you your sins too. Stop judging others. Luke 6.37 says, Stop judging others and you will not be judged. Stop criticizing others, for it will all come back on you. If you forgive others, you will be forgiven. And I love what James says in James 2.13, For there will be no mercy for you if you have not been merciful to others. But 
If you have been merciful, then God's mercy towards you will run out over His judgment against you. I read a quote not too long ago that says this. As long as we are unable to forgive, we keep ourselves chained to the unforgiving. We give them rent-free space in our mind, emotional shackles in our heart, and the right to torment us in the small hours of the night. Someone else said, the saddest people I know are those who are unable to forgive. With that in mind, as we bring this to a close this morning, and I know I've got two more statements to give you, and I'm going to give you these in just a moment. But before we do, I want you to watch a video that I think poignantly sets the stage for this whole issue of forgiveness in our lives. See, I know there's nobody here who hasn't been hurt or wounded, and it's legitimate. It's real. You were really hurt. They really did harm you. I know that. And we're not saying what they did was right. But listen, my daddy always told me, but with two wrongs, never make a right. See, I can't hurt them back, and then all of a sudden we're, we're, we're equal. We're okay. It doesn't work that way. In spite of the pain, because I have been forgiven, I have to choose as a choice. Watch this video and let us speak to you.
those words at the end there. When we have been done great injury, we never recover until we forgive. Forgiveness does not change the past, but it does enlarge the future. Incredible quote written in her journal on April the 16th, 2007, before Mary Reed and 30 some other of her friends were shot dead on the Virginia Tech campus on April the 16th, 2007. It was as if she knew that that day held a day in her heart. She was going to have to forgive. And you know, I believe as that trigger was pulled, Mary had that in her heart. As we close the service, I wonder what's in your heart. How do you forgive me? How do you make amends with me? How do you go back and make something right? How do you let go? In your notes, let me give these to you very quickly right up here. Number one, do it today. Listen, this is the area that all of us have to give to procrastination in. Someday I will. Someday I'll forgive them. I love this one. You ready? I'll forgive them if they ask for it. Really? I kind of doubt that. Because you've already built a storage building for it, haven't you? We've tucked it away. Pastor, I'm just not... Someday when I'm a much better Christian, I'll forgive them. Number two, write this one down. Nail it to the cross. Nail it. The only way you can forgive is to be reminded of the forgiveness that you have. When I have dealt with people in my life who've hurt me, and I don't know about you, maybe you're insulated and isolated enough you're not getting hurt anymore, but I get hurt all the time. I got cussed out before church started this morning. It's a glorious day to start a Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. How many of you know it's just the world we live in? But you, if you hang on to it, you'll become the most bitter, but if you turn loose of it, and the best place I've found for it is a cross. I run to the cross to Jesus. You took care of this. I'm giving it to you. Would you stand with me this morning across this room? We're going to pray. Remember, I know this is heavy stuff. How many of you know? This is not one of those light little snacks. This is a big, thick casserole right here. <laughs> big one. I know that we all have somebody we need to release. And I know we all have somebody we need to go make amends. I'm challenging you to do it. No wait. And I believe God will help you make the choice. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you today, God. You didn't bring us here today, Lord, just to stir up emotions. You didn't bring us here today, Lord, just to remind us of something we already knew. You brought us here today, Lord, to challenge us to do something about it. Lord, to step out in faith. And Lord, to nail those offenses to the cross of Jesus Christ. That's where they belong. To do it today, to choose today, Lord, to Lord, examine all of our relationships, to offer forgiveness to those who've hurt us. And Lord, to try to make things right with those we've hurt. Father, I pray for wisdom. I pray for courage. I pray for boldness. I pray for action, Lord. And I pray, God, we would move out swiftly and do the work, Lord, that is the work of the kingdom. We'll be blessed, Lord, if we show mercy, because we will receive mercy. We'll be blessed, Lord, if we'll make peace. I pray, Lord, that you would bless your people as they walk in obedience to you, for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ. I ask these things. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Listen, make that healing choice. Amen. Make that healing choice. Do it and see what God does. I love you guys so much. I love you bunches. I'll see you later. Amen. Have a great one, and uh, pray for our second service this morning. God bless you.